Hey everybody, so today we're going to actually run an experiment where we're going to test whether or not an ice cube will melt faster in fresh water or salt water. Before we do that, I want you to take a few minutes and try to answer that question yourself. So you're actually going to come up with a hypothesis. And this is going to be a very simple hypothesis. There are really only three possibilities, right? One, the ice cube will melt faster in fresh water. Two, the ice cube will melt faster in salt water. Or three, there's going to be no difference in the speed of melting between fresh water or salt water. The challenging part is to think about why you chose the hypothesis that you chose. What is your rationale for picking that hypothesis? And you don't have to be correct. That's the beauty of science. We come up with hypotheses all the time that are incorrect, and then we test it, and we find out that it is incorrect, and then we revise our hypotheses. And we're going to be doing the same thing today. So before we get to that experiment, though, I do want you to pause the video and just spend a couple minutes thinking about your hypothesis and why you came up with the hypothesis that you came up with. And then we're actually going to test it. Okay, so a couple of things to take note of there. The first is, you probably noticed that the salt water looked a lot cloudier than the fresh water. That's because I was actually using store-bought salt. If I was using pure salt or like lab-grade salt or something like that, then it would actually be clear, but store-bought salt has a lot of impurities in it, and so that's why there's the cloudiness. Um, and then the second thing is that the ice cubes themselves were about the same size when they started, but as you saw in the video, at the end, the ice cube from the fresh water had melted a lot more than the ice cube from the salt water. So maybe that is what your hypothesis was, maybe it wasn't. Typically when I do this experiment in class and I ask people to give me their hypotheses ahead of time, almost universally people think that the ice cube is going to melt faster in salt water. And when you ask them why, the response is typically something like, well, when it's icy outside, we add salt to roads and something about the salt speeds up melting or something like that. Um, and so you automatically associate salt with melting. And in this case, the ice cube clearly melted faster in the fresh water. So now I want you to revise your hypothesis um, now that you know the answer. And if you initially predicted that the ice would melt faster in fresh water, then your hypothesis has so far withstood testing, and so we can still accept it. Um, if you suggested that they would be the same or that the ice cube would melt faster in salt water, now you need to revise your hypothesis and again think about why this is the case. And what we're going to do now is we're going to test this in a slightly different way. I'm going to change one thing. Instead of using clear ice, I'm going to use ice that I added food coloring to so that you can actually watch what happens as the ice melts. So we'll watch that and then we'll talk about what is actually occurring.
In order to determine what's happening, let's focus on the jar on the right, which is the ice cube that's melting in the fresh water. Notice that you see a blue trail kind of sinking away from that ice cube. That, it, that represents the melt water coming from the ice cube. And the reason that it's sinking is because that cold, fresh water coming from the ice cube is more dense than the surrounding room temperature water in the jar. And therefore that cold water sinks. And what it then does is it forces the warm water back up toward the ice cube. So it displaces that warmer water, that room temperature water back up to the ice cube. Essentially it's generating a current there where cold water is always sinking away from the ice cube and warmer water is being displaced upward and therefore the, the ice cube is always in contact with room temperature warmer water as the cold water sinks away and that is why the ice cube melts fairly quickly. Now focus on the jar on the left which shows what's happening in the salt water. The same processes are occurring. The cold fresh water is coming off of the ice cube except there's nowhere for it to go because that cold fresh water is not dense enough to overcome the density of the surrounding salt water even though that salt water is warmer. So there are two things that influence the density of water. There's temperature and there's salinity. Colder water is more dense than warmer water and saltier water is more dense than fresh water. Sometimes it's helpful to view this as a diagram to understand what is happening. So this is a diagram outlining basically what I just went through where you have on the right hand side the ice cube melting in the fresh water, the cold, more dense water sinking away from the ice cube generating a current where the warmer water is displaced upward, and then on the left hand side is what's occurring in the salt water where the cold water coming off of the ice is not dense enough to overcome the density of the salty water. And basically in the salt water that cold fresh water will just sit on top and you'll have cold fresh water sitting on top of warmer salt water, creating a sort of lens. And that lens is what, what insulates the ice cube and slows down the melting. This is what the jars look like after about 10 minutes. And what you can really see here is on the left hand side, that blue is really concentrated in the upper part of the jar. So that's that cold fresh water sitting on the warmer salt water. And you can really see that fresh water lens. On the right hand side in the fresh water, the whole jar is turned blue. That's because that's very well mixed now because of that current that was generated. Okay, so what does this have to do with the ocean? Well, it turns out that one of the major factors that influences global ocean circulation is simply differences in density of seawater, driven by differences in temperature and differences in salinity. In fact, we just demonstrated how these density-driven currents can form from our simple ice cube experiment that we just conducted. Density-driven currents in the ocean is what controls global circulation of the ocean. And we call this phenomena global thermohaline circulation. Thermo for temperature and haline for salinity because those are the two factors which influence the density of seawater. This thermohaline circulation also sometimes called the global conveyor belt, is connected to surface currents which are driven by wind patterns. Understanding ocean circulation is critical for understanding how heat and nutrients move around our oceans. This in turn determines where we find phytoplankton and marine algae, which are shown here in this spinning animation. Phytoplankton form the base of the marine food web, and therefore their presence is critical for all life in the oceans.